Hi everyone. Happy 2012. Things aren't looking any better. Obama signs controversial defense bill. Yeah, Obama signed that NDAA 2012 bill, the one that said that as of now, American citizens can be detained without due process as a terror suspect, even if you're an American. And, and according to this, Americans will be transferred to foreign prisons under Indefinite Detention Act. It doesn't have to be in the U.S. They, they can detain you without you know, having basically any rights, no access to a lawyer, any of that stuff. Uh, but it doesn't have to be in the U.S. They could just send you off to you know, wherever they want, some country where they torture people maybe. And in the first article, it says that uh, Obama expressed worries about the legislation he signed, meaning the NDAA 2012. A quote, uh, the fact that I support this bill as a whole doesn't mean I agree with everything in it, he said while on vacation in Hawaii. How nice for him. I have signed this bill despite having serious reservations with certain provisions uh, that regulate the detention, interrogation, and pr prosecution of suspected terrorists. But as it turned out, he was the one who insisted that they put that in the bill. So this whole thing about him wanting to veto it and not agreeing with it, I, it's just like a lot of nonsense because he's the one who made sure that it was like this. Anyone who's engaged in hostilities against uh, the American forces who is not a member of a real army, which is basically what the so-called terrorists are. They're like a guerrilla army because the the Americans go into a country, declare war uh, unilaterally, and then co-opt their government, install a puppet government. Uh, but then the people of the country are fighting against the occupation, the invasion. And because they're not members of a real military with true leadership and a uniform, etc., um, they're not accorded the rights that military personnel would usually have, including as prisoners of war. Uh, they're, however, not exactly civilians, so they've created this gray area of enemy combatants, which is what they call terrorists, and for them, uh, they have this special treatment, which means basically you, you're treated like a military prisoner, but without the rights of a, a regular uh, military prisoner who's part of an army. So it's, they just, all the rights just go out the window, and before it was, you know, uh, applying only to foreigners, but now it applies to Americans. But what's the difference? I mean, they opened this door a long time ago. They should have never done this in the first place. You know, people should have rights. There should be just basic human rights that should be accorded to everyone, and they just create this gray area so that they can do whatever they want, and it's terrible. And this article also goes on to say that Obama is uh, imposing more sanctions against Iran, and it's looking like they're, you know, they're heading into war with Iran. But as they discussed in the interview, Iran's uh, allies are China and Russia. So, does the U.S. really want to get involved with this? Uh, are they attacking Iran as a way of indirectly attacking Russia and China? To me, it looks like attacking Iran, when they have those kinds of allies, is a, basically just a kind of military suicide. I mean, there's no way that America, with, they have a population of, what, 350 million? Going up against China, 200 billion people, and an enormous army, plus Russia? That's, you know, talk about an unwinnable war. Why would they want to do that is, if it's not in the interest of, of America. Well, I think that the, looking at the bigger picture, it's in the interest of the globalist elites whose goals are, you know, wealth redistribution and complete tyranny. They don't really care if America as a country is destroyed or disintegrated. That would probably serve their purposes. As James Wolfenson, the former president of the World Bank from 1995 to 2005 said, uh, there's a tectonic shift happening right now in terms of uh, wealth redistribution. It's all shifting over to Asia. China and India are the global economic leaders, or they're going into that position. America is, you know, not not up in, in first place anymore. And you have to look at the, the big picture. Is this really American imperialism, or is this really just globalist, elite, uh, centralized, globalized government imperialism coming from something much more centralized and the US has been sort of the military arm of that until now but it's not really just in the US's interest it's in the interest of something much higher up so you could send uh, the American military into Iran even if 
there is no way that that's going to benefit America economically or militarily, strategically in any way. America can be sort of sacrificed for that, for the purpose of, on the larger scale, restructuring not just the Middle East but the world. And I think that if they were to go into Iran, uh, that's what they would be accomplishing. So are we heading into war with Iran? Well, in the meantime, the U.S. seems to be preparing for that. U.S. in 3.5 billion arms sale to UAE amid Iran tensions. So they're arming Iran's neighbors in preparation. But if you go and look at this report, U.S. sold arms to Iran, lost own nuclear materials. It's from 2010. According to the Russian government, uh, the U.S. not only lost something like a thousand uh, items of uh, nuclear war material on its own soil, but um, all, and also violated a treaty and, and did a lot of other things, uh, but also uh, sold arms to Iran. Well, they would do something like that. They have a very long history of arming uh, both sides of a conflict. Sell arms to Iran, then go after Iran, then sell arms to the UAE. You know, that's what they do. That's what they've always done. And, and it's not in a, the U.S.'s interest or anyone's, any country's interest. It's, it's in the interest of those who would like solidified, centralized global government that has complete control over everything. And this is exactly what they've been doing. They've been working on this for a long time using a multi-pronged approach. Pentagon created Arab Spring over a decade ago. This is an interview on Russia Today with F. William Engdahl. And he says that these revolutions in uh, the, the Middle East were orchestrated, designed a decade ago, and that the purpose they serve is, of course, not to bring peace and stability and democracy, but to totally destabilize the region so that then they can use this instability as an excuse to bring in NATO to supposedly, uh, you know, clean it up and uh, bring, uh, bring peace back to the area. But it's just, again, a strategy for global government. So the New World Order has been working very hard all year and, well, for a long time, decades. Sanctions against countries, arming both sides of the conflict, uh, going into a country like Iran when you know that it's suicide for America. This is all part of the bigger picture of basically dismantling the world that we have, the world that we have had and that we somewhat still have now, tearing that down and building a new world order. Thanks for listening to me, and I'll see you next time. Truth